<laughs> okay, hello analysis 1A. We did a bunch of these related rates problems in class and we skipped number two because we were just kind of running out of time. I wanted to make sure to get to number three. Anyway, let's do it right now, it's not that hard. And uh, there's no good video of this online, so uh, I'll just do it right here in the uh, period four Jamboard. Well, let's go. Um, a ladder, 10 feet long, rests against a vertical wall. The bottom of the ladder slides away from the wall at a rate of one foot per second. How fast is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall when the bottom of the ladder is six feet from the wall? Okay, so step one, read and understand the problem. I think I basically get it. I have a wall and I have a ladder and the ladder's like sliding down the wall or something like that. Uh, okay. Um, I'll read it again as needed. Um, first, let's go to the next step, which is to draw a picture. So let's do that right now. Here is my picture. And uh, okay, it looks kind of like this. Let me just, um, sorry, that picture didn't need to be quite so big. Um, so boom, so there's my wall. And you know, walls are generally perpendicular to the ground, but okay, even it says it, you know, vertical wall. All right, so uh, great. Uh, what's going on? I got a ladder. So that, oh man, sorry, I want this to be beautiful. Um, <laughs> yeah, that'll just be good enough. So jump, 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 jump. And there's my beautiful ladder. Okay, great. Um, what, uh, what next? Um, a ladder 10 feet long rests against a vertical wall. Um, if the bottom of the ladder slides away from the wall at a rate of one foot per second, how fast is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall? Okay, so read and understand the question. Draw a picture. Pick variables for the quantities which are changing. And well, what seems to be changing in this problem? Maybe it's a little bit difficult to understand uh, to, uh, to understand kind of what's going on. Maybe not. Um, the bottom of the ladder here is, is moving sort of in this direction, away from the wall, and the top of the ladder is moving down the wall. So that's, that's the key idea. And uh, I think an important point, which is kind of obvious, uh, but maybe worth saying anyway, is that the ladder is just 10 feet long, and the ladder is the ladder. The ladder is not changing. This is not like a collapsible ladder or anything. Um, so when I say that the next step is pick variables for the quantities which are changing, you know, I'm very serious about that. If there's a quantity in the problem that is not changing, you know, don't assign a variable to it. That's kind of a kind of an amateurish move or something is uh, is assigning a variable to the to the length of the ladder because of course the ladder is just ten. It's ten for the for the entire problem. It's a constant, so don't pick a variable for that. What is changing? Well, it's I seem to care about. Um, how fast the top of the ladder is sliding down the wall and how fast the bottom of the ladder is sliding away from the wall. So therefore the things kind of of interest in this problem are how far the bottom of the ladder is from the, the wall and how far the top of the ladder is from the ground. So it might not be totally obvious there, but the, the variables I want are um, a variable representing the distance the bottom of the ladder is from the wall, and another variable representing the distance the top of the ladder is from the ground. Uh, okay, so those those are the quantities uh, which are changing this problem. Um, all right, and you know I'm not going to insist that you write out like a whole sentence like let x equal the distance from the bottom of the ladder to the base of the wall, but you should at least you know say it to yourself out, out loud or, or in your head. Be very clear about the meaning of the variables that you are assigning to the problem. I think the picture helps. Okay, read and understand the problem. Draw a picture. Pick variables for the quantities which are changing. Add those variables to your picture as I've done now. And okay, restate the information given in the problem in terms of those variables. So what information was given in this problem? What, what is it that I know? Well, I know that the bottom of the ladder slides away from the wall at a rate of one foot per second. And another way of saying that is that this point uh, on the bottom of the ladder is moving, you know, one foot per second uh, away, farther away from the wall. In other words, x is getting bigger. What is the rate at which x is getting bigger? Well, it's move x is getting bigger at a rate of one foot per second. Therefore, translated into the language of calculus, dx dt is one um, foot per second. What is it that I want? Um, what I want to know is how fast is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall um, when the ladder is six feet from the wall. 
In other words, what I'm interested in is dy dt, and not just in dy dt in general, but specifically this problem asks for what is dy dt when the bottom of the ladder is six feet from the wall? In other words, when x is six. Okay, so this is the question I'm going to answer. And maybe even before I start, we should sort of uh, invoke our, our intuitions on this matter or something. Um, I think what makes this problem a little bit tricky is mm, your experience is, is with ladders like falling, maybe. Um, maybe if the bottom of this ladder were slippery, you know, that would be a bad uh, ladder. But uh, if somehow the ladder were on wheels or something like that, who knows, and the ladder were to just fall, um, then it would it would fall under the the influence of gravity, and um, the rate at which it would fall would be kind of I don't know what it would be. That would maybe be a complicated problem actually, because um, you know the the gravity would cause the the ladder um, to accelerate, uh, and the speed would be increasing. You know, blah blah blah. But actually, this is this is not that situation. This ladder is not in free fall. Um, this ladder is moving in a, in a different kind of way, right? It's x which is moving at a linear rate. So you should sort of try, I think, for all these problems, if you want to really learn something sort of deep about the way the world works, you should try to kind of feel what you think uh, dy dt is, sort of. Is it like linear or is it something else? Well, if dx dt is constant, then maybe a better kind of explanation here would, would be in order. It's almost like there's like some kind of little remote control car or something like that. And the, the base of the ladder is inside that remote control car and the car is moving at a constant rate. So sort of the bottom of the ladder is being dragged away at a constant rate. Okay, and if the ladder is being bottom of the ladder is being dragged away at a constant rate, what does that tell me about the rate at which y is changing? Not totally sure, but <clears throat> it feels to me at least like when x is very small, that small changes in x don't seem to affect y very much. Um, I, if I had to, if I had to sort of feel this by using my imagination, that uh, you know, dy dt is going to be kind of slow when x is when x is small, but then when x is getting bigger, it seems like um, changes in x are going to affect y more. But I'm not really sure. Let's do the algebra and find out. Uh, okay, so um, now that I have translated the the information uh, in the problem into into the sort of language of calculus with the variables that we've chosen, we've sort of we've sort of finished with the reading comprehension part. Now we just have to do a math problem, uh, which is in part a geometry problem because what is the relationship between these variables? Well, okay, I think it's pretty obvious that the relationship between these variables is just the Pythagorean relationship. So x squared plus y squared equals ten squared. And that's the static relationship between the variables. If you give me an x, I can find out what y is and vice versa. But what I want to know is the relationship between the rates at which x and y are changing. And so I now differentiate both sides with respect to t. And yeah, oops, um, yeah, differentiate both sides with respect to t. So uh, what is the derivative of x squared with respect to t? Well, x is something that depends on t, and y is something that depends on t. So these are both composite functions. Uh, in other words, the derivative of x squared requires the chain rule um, and uh, or implicit differentiation, which is really just the chain rule. So the derivative of something squared is 2 something back inside for the derivative of the something. Uh, plus the derivative of uh, y squared with respect to t. Well, the derivative of uh, something squared is 2 something back inside for the derivative of the something. And then the right hand side is just 0. So, okay, this is maybe hard at first, and then after a while it becomes like extremely automatic and you don't even have to think about it, but you definitely need to understand why, why the chain rule is needed here. Okay, well, now what? Goal was to find dy dt. Uh, I can divide both sides by 2, so the 2's go away. Um, I don't know how many algebra steps to, to skip, but I certainly get that y dy dt is negative x dx dt. And finally, I'm going to solve for dy dt. So what is dy dt? It's negative x um, dx dt uh, over dy dt. No, sorry, over y. Um, okay, so this to me, uh, not everyone does this, but I think it's worth doing because just for, for sort of conceptual clarity here, I like to have solved for dy dt in general. 
And what I mean by in general is I've just now proven to you that actually for any uh, x and y which are in this kind of uh, uh, relationship where they're, they're legs of a right triangle, then the rate of change of y with respect to t is going to be negative x um, times dx dt over y. So that, that's sort of like in general this this is going to be true about anything just from just from this picture basically just just from just from this relationship but uh, okay moving on uh, of course I can um, substitute in some specific values because after all the thing that I knew in this problem is that dx dt is 1 so since dx dt is 1 then let me just stick that in here in fact dx dt is constant um, and now, subbing that in for, for one, I get this formula, which is still a general formula, but now it's the sort of uh, general formula for the relationship between um, dy dt and x and y. Okay, uh, there's still uh, um, the, the problem to finish, and the problem says, hey, I'm not interested in a general formula for dy dt, I'm interested in dy dt at x equals 6. Before I plug that in, let's stop for a minute and just see whether this matches our intuition. Our intuition was um, that, my intuition was that when x was very small, y wouldn't be changing that much. And in fact, that's kind of what we see here, right? When x is small, y is big, because they're, um, you know, kind of inversely related to each other. And yeah, so that, that seems to be true. And then we can also see from this formula, we can build some intuition from the formula, that when x is very big and y is very small, actually dy dt is very fast. So towards the end there, you know, this ladder is going to make most of its, uh, it's going to be changing at the fastest rate, something like that. Okay, well finally now I'm going to plug in the particular information. I want to know dy dt when x is 6. So what is dy dt when x is 6? Well, I follow the formula. The formula says plug in the value of x, which is 6, and plug in the value of y. Oh, wait a second. I don't know the value of y when x is 6. So now there's a kind of a separate step that's often required, which is find the relationship between x and y for the particular um, situation at the end when it comes to evaluating things. So the ladder is, is always 10 feet long. When x is 6, of course, y is 8. Therefore, um, y, the, the, the y that I plug in here is 8 because that is the value of y when x is 6. Uh, okay, and so the final answer is that dy dt at x equals 6 is negative 3 fourths and the units are feet per second. Yep. Uh, okay, so that's, that's the, the, the final answer and uh, maybe one last thing to say. This is negative. Does that make sense? What does that kind of mean? Well, yeah, it does make sense because, uh, of course, as x is moving, y is getting smaller. And if y is getting smaller, then the, the rate at which y is changing is, in fact, negative. You know, dy dt, the, the slope of y is negative or, or whatever. So uh, since y is getting smaller, uh, we should have expected this answer to be negative, actually. Okay, uh, that's it. Goodbye.